Um, so maybe, maybe if you don't mind, Mark, I might just uh, start by um, introducing Dr. Mark Leather from Marjon University, uh, University of uh, St. Mark and St. John in Plymouth. Um, so uh, Mark has uh, a long engagement in uh, the world of outdoor learning and uh, is a prolific uh, contributor to journals and book chapters and his latest uh, work is has been as joint editor of a special edition of uh, the Joey Journal. That's the Journal of Environmental and uh, of Outdoor and Environmental Education, um, uh, which was a specially themed issue around the area of forest schools. Uh, but Mark's background is is very broad, and certainly many of the conversations we've been having today about place-based education is will be a strong aspect in his practice uh, and the, the maritime traditions of uh, Plymouth. So, thank you very much, Mark, for for agreeing to to present and for presenting online. Sort of, it does feel a bit Eurovisiony, and I'm almost um, uh, expecting the French jury to say Royaume-Uni zero point, but uh, hopefully they won't say that today. Um, Nil pois. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, Mark, thank you very much, and we'll uh, we'll hand it over to you. And I think you've got control of the screen for um, for advancing your slides as well. Okay, Thomas, that's fabulous. Thank you very much. Um, for once in my life, I might have some level of control over something. Um, and when the technology is concerned, uh, that's always exciting. Uh, so, thank you, Thomas. Um, this is a great event, I have to say. Uh, I've uh, been really uh, following this morning as much as I can, given my other duties. Um, so some fabulous technical support. Thank you. Um, and actually, uh, it's a great honor to be invited. Um, for those, uh, I can see a, a few folk from Australia joining in. For those folk who are at the, um, uh, the National Outdoor Ed uh, um, conference in uh, Hobart a couple of weeks ago, this is pretty much the, 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 a very similar presentation. Uh, so hopefully it, um, it will make more sense the second time round. Um, and in terms of this, I kind of just want us to um, think about uh, the big picture. Um, and I guess as an educator, it's about asking questions and asking critical questions that I think are important. Uh, and I'm going to put my hand up and go, I don't have all the answers. I wouldn't claim to have all the answers. If you ever hear me say that, please um, just pull the plug and, and go over to Sweden. Um, so this is a critique of Forest School, or as I've described it, I think something lost in translation. Um, just in case you're not sure, uh, I am in the southwest of England. I know we've got folk from Ireland and around the world today, and uh, I have the great honour of, of working um, down here. We're in the southwest peninsula, right next to Dartmoor National Park, uh, famous for many things, including Sherlock Holmes and the Hound of the Baskervilles, uh, as well as the historic maritime port of Plymouth. Uh, and there's certainly lots of place-based outdoor education. We are the home of mass genocide um, around the globe, um, which is something I regularly point out to my um, students. So who am I? Um, well, that's me. Um, I, you know, I'm... Uh, I, I'm a father, first and foremost. Uh, I enjoy it a lot of time. It's my biggest adventure. My biggest um, challenge is uh, uh, what am I going to do with my kids this bank holiday weekend? Where are we going? What adventures can we have? Um, so I am an educator and I like asking questions. I prefer nature and the outdoors. Uh, and when I wrote this list, it did make me giggle as it was pointed out to me by somebody that maybe I should somehow rephrase the term that I'm an outdoor lover. Um, take that however um, <laughs> however you wish. Um, okay, so the slides have um, uh, imported here without, um, without the uh, animation, which is fine. So what is Forest School? Um, I'm going to suggest that, I do suggest that it's a brand. It's a brand, it's an approach to outdoor education. Um, it's a recognisable brand uh, and it is similar in that sense to the scout movement, to the cadets mentioned earlier, to the Duke of Edinburgh award scheme, um, uh, to Outward Bound. These are all recognizable brands or approaches or social movements, if you like, um, towards educating people outdoors. 
Um, and in that, that is one of the issues um, that I suggest is problematic. Uh, in that uh, Forest School uh, started as a philosophical approach to engaging young children, particularly in nature, in the outdoors for learning. And uh, in the importation into the British culture, and particularly the English culture, it has become a um, it's become a product, a brand, a way of doing things. So just in case we're not sure um, what children may do in uh, forest school sessions. Um, and many of us would have done these kind of activities before forest school was invented. Uh, myself, I spent many years happily in the scouts, lighting fires, setting fire to things, making, making rope swings, uh, throwing axes at people and, uh, and that kind of thing. Um, so what children may do is, is not that unusual. Um, and if we look at the definition that Sarah Knight provides us with, um, I think one of the uh, key features compared to standard outdoor education in a British context is that it happens over time. It's repeated. It's weekly repeated. It's not just a one-off um, residential. Um, Although there's no there's no mention uh, in this definition of what a forest is, and um, um, it's questionable whether we actually have forests in the UK anyway. Um, is the setting um, if, if the setting is not a usual one, but it happens over time and it's repeated, then surely the setting becomes familiar and usual. Um, and number four, there there's no such thing as bad weather, only bad clothing. That's really important. I'm going to park that one right now and come back to that in a wee while. Um, so there, there's, a, there's a declared definition. Um, interestingly, on the chat, I just see that there's an Irish Forest Schools Association. And I'm going to suggest to you that, um, as was pointed out to me by um, Shane, an indigenous educator in Australia, the English are professional colonizers. I'm sure I don't need to tell anyone in um, in Ireland that, but we certainly professionally colonised um, uh, many parts of the world, um, and we have this obsession with national governing body awards and national governing bodies. Um, we're great at clubs. We're really good at clubs. We're really good at organisations, um, and you know what? It uh, I find that problematic just because. Um, well, on the, on the one hand, that's great. We have British canoeing. We have the Royal Yachting Association. We have some ways in which we can share good practice. But my problem with it becomes when it's the only way to be in the forest or on the hill or on the water. The only way to light a fire is the forest school way. Um, I also struggle with this as a definition. The Forest School Association would say this because the, um, they have a vested interest in promoting their, their members, um, I've put the double asterisks there and they, next to the self-esteem because they, it's all about opportunities to achieve and develop confidence and self-esteem. Um, and that is problematic. Um, why critique? Well, um, since I started talking about this uh, five years ago now, um, there's been a growth, uh, there was a growth in, in books and they all seem to come from Sarah Knight and the, the so there seemed to be one view of what forest school is or could be and as well as that the dominance of um, commercial training providers such as Archimedes um, and why do we need to critique well uh, as uh, Sarah Knight says if we are to develop a shared national model for forest school in the UK, there must be robust discussion and debate. Um, to which I ask those questions there underneath. Uh, do we actually need, want or need a shared national model? If anyone is able to give me a clear, concise, shared definition of outdoor education or outdoor learning, then I, I don't think we have that. Um, is it possible? Is it desirable? Uh, I'm not certain. Why else would I critique? Um, it's just I'm a grumpy old man, although my students uh, and my children might tell you differently, uh, certainly my colleagues would. Uh, a methodical practice of doubt. I am a skeptic, 
um, when I hear people um, waving a flag and saying, hey, I've just found the great new panacea for all ills of um, mental well-being, physical well-being, numeracy literacy, we've got to take people outside, um, then uh, it, it, just, it just makes me think about the, the bigger picture. Um, and as in a moment, I will also um, say that, do you know what? Um, whilst, I, my, whilst this is a critique, I am a fan of Forest School. And just in case people haven't heard that, because they perceive my critique as just as a good old slagging off of people doing some great work, I'm a fan of Forest School. If it means that more kids at a younger age get outside and spend time in nature and connecting with themselves, with others, with the planet, then from my perspective, I think that can be good. And also, I think perhaps the Forest School brand is also good in that it provides recognition for parents as a good thing. Um, I struggle when the claims made by those who uh, are promoting it are not supported by the research evidence. And uh, if you've not come across it before, I'd like to introduce you to um, significant life experiences, the, uh, the research of Louise Chola that finds that in educational, uh, in environmental education, early experience, early years experience is more likely to lead to pro-environmental behaviours um, in, in later life. And for me, that's, that, that's a good thing. Okay, so my critique raises three key issues. Um, and some of them have started to come out already, and some of them um, are appearing. I've got, a, I've got the, uh, the message feed going on in the background as well. And in an act of shameless self-promotion, uh, and in the, uh, in the uh, name of collegiality and the sharing, the people publishing for once have decided to make uh, the article, um, which is the lead article in the special issue, um, free to download for a couple of months. So if you want a, an original copy, um, look up Springer and, uh, and follow the link. Okay, um, outdoor education uh, in Britain. I can only really, uh, I, I'm, I, I'm really talking about this from a British cultural um, perspective. Outdoor ed in Britain is uh, culturally, socially, historically constructed. The influences of uh, Victorian muscular Christianity, um, the power dynamic, teacher knows best, uh, the readiness for war, the need for physical education. We saw it in uh, the rise of the scout movement between the Great War and the Second World War. We see it in the development of Outward Bound during the Second World War. And we see it in the, the evolution into the Duke of Edinburgh award scheme. Our history, our culture frames that. And combined with that, our our British colonialism, of which, um, unfortunately, we were hugely successful. Um, and that uh, is seen in the Scout Movement, Outward Bound Schools, and the Duke of Edinburgh Award Scheme, I believe, is available in, in, in over 100 countries throughout the world. Um, and at the heart of these are those classic culturally held neo harnian approaches about suffering and endurance and the wet and the cold. Um, so I, I just think we need to step back a moment, uh, and it's fascinating listening to my pal TA. Hi TA. Um, talk about you know how the island nations and the indigenous folk are uh, in Newfoundland uh, tell stories relating to the land, um, because uh, outdoor education clearly uh, is a social construct. Yeah, outdoor education is a social construction. Forest school is a social construction, and for the, excuse me if uh, we fully understand what that is, but for those people in the audience who, who are not sure, um, a social construction. Um, what did I have for breakfast this morning? I had a good old full English breakfast, you know, sausage, egg, um, tomato, bacon. Well, I didn't because I'm a vegetarian, so I wouldn't eat that nonsense, but that's what a full English is, um, and of course. That would be very rude of me now in uh, being aware of my um, rampant colonial history to come round and, and demand a full English. But that's OK, because I know that when I'm in Ireland, I can have an, an Irish breakfast. Yeah. And it's normally served with white pudding, soda bread and the common box tea, I'm told. 
Um, I don't recall having, when I stayed with you, um, Thomas, I think we had far finer fare for breakfast. Um, of course, um, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the physical island of uh, Ireland um, has the north and the Ulster Fry, where everything's fried in lard. Uh, and I must admit, I do get some very strange looks when I'm going around the world taking photographs of um, adverts for breakfast. <clears throat> And then, of course, maybe um, if you're a large corporation, you just um, um, you just advertise a great British breakfast and hedge your bets, whatever it means to be British. And interestingly, when I was just having a look through Google Images, I couldn't find a European breakfast at all. I couldn't find a shared notion of what European breakfasts are. And maybe that's where the whole Brexit debate's gone. Um, I do remember saying at the EOE conference in Sweden at the youth hostel and one of the um, German um, uh, delegates said to me in the breakfast line, what is it with you British and your baked beans? And maybe that's the, the start of many things. So let's get back to the story. It's um, uh, uh, Forest School is a social construct. All outdoor education is, is, a, is a social construct, whether we're climbing mountains, paddling rivers, sailing the seas, we're doing it for purposes of education and recreation, in essence. We might want to challenge, develop, learn. Um, lighting fires in the forest. Lighting fires, um, uh, you know, 150 years ago was a way of surviving. It was a way of staying warm and cooking food and heating water, as it still is in many developing parts of the world. So I think we need to hold on to the, the whole notion of it as a, a, as a social construct. We have sail training. Um, I would have had outdoor education as if I'd been around 150 years ago, 200 years ago, in the time of Nelson's Navy, because um, when the British Empire was expansive, we had a heck of a lot of ships and a heck of a lot, heck of, a lot of warships. I would have been taught how to sail by my father, either for fishing, adventure, commerce, or to go out and fight people. And um, so Forest School is a social construct. The sitting around the building of shelters, um, we're using these things for the purpose of development. So in this um, social construct, back to the idea of um, Forest School as a, 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 the, the, the definition, there's no such thing as bad weather, only bad clothing. Uh, well, I was having a, a chat with Thomas last week and I was following TA's progress along the, the Kerry Way. And um, sometimes there is such a thing as bad weather. There's choosing to inhabit the outside, as so long as you've got the right kit, um, which I buy into. But I culturally still have colleagues of mine saying, oh, of course, well, you, you know, look at the weather. You, it, this is your kind of weather, Mark. You like going out getting wet and cold. And I don't. I really don't. Um, Uh, is that we still have our British Victorian values that influence and drive what we do. We have playtime in primary school that when it's raining, you do not go outside and put a coat on and your welly boots or your gum boots or whatever they call. Um, you sit inside or you play inside. Uh, we have a staff walking club once a week that some, some of the professional services um, organise in the name of balance. The uh, work-life balance and, and physical and mental well-being and regularly on the staff newsletter for the last two months um, walking club is cancelled due to the weather so um, it, it's part of British culture and um, this um, play on words is actually I, I don't know if we've got anyone who speaks Norwegian in the room, but I, I, I wanted to find out where it came from. I heard it first from Billy Connolly, the, uh, the comic, and um, there's no such thing uh, as bad weather, only bad clothing. Ingen slik ting som dalig ver, ver dalig klær. Um, so it's, it, it rhymes, it's a play on words, and it also reflects the free the sliv, the, uh, the whole cultural uh, understanding of time spent outside um, and I think it's important for us to understand that so that's the weather there's also the essence of child-centered play um, which I'll come back to later um, so forest school fires um, are 
if this is the only way to light a fire, why is it that we in the wet countries, I really love the term TA bog kindergarten, I've already gone off and copyrighted that so you and I can maybe make some money out of it. Um, I, I particularly like the, there's one way to light a fire and that's using a strikey thing to make, um, and that goes on your tinder, that goes on your, your, on your kindling. Uh, if you've tried to light a fire in Ireland recently, or you've tried to write, light a fire in England recently, that's really quite problematic. However, the acceptable cheat to that is take my makeup remove pads, put some Vaseline on it and set fire to it. Um, I come from a much more pragmatic 1970s scouting background where you'd pour some paraffin on it, you'd get some lighter fuel, you'd get some newspaper, and if that didn't work, maybe some diesel. And then if that didn't work, maybe some petrol. Um, we had a few adventures with that. So I'm just questioning if the one way to do things. Then the other thing that I find particularly problematic is when we colonize and misappropriate other folks' culture, the professional colonization of ideas um, without permission or respect or understanding. Now, it's not just Forest School that does this. I'm a proud supporter of Exeter Rugby Union um, uh, Football Club, and unfortunately, uh, they are called the Exeter Chiefs. The historical goes back to the 1920s, a bit like the Washington Redskins or the Kansas City Chiefs in the National Football League. And I have to explain that it's quite um, offensive. Um, it's really quite offensive to um, uh, indigenous folk to um, be replicating this in that way. And I guess one of the issues for me that I've learned recently, or I've been I'm mulling over recently, and I look forward to discussion about it, is clearly as an Englishman, as a Brit, as an Englishman, I have no idea who my indigenous peoples are. Um, am, I, am I an Angle? Am I a Saxon? Am I a, um, a Norman? Am I a Roman? Uh, am I part Spanish for the people who were shipwrecked and lived on the coast, certainly in Cornwall? And so our understanding and appreciation of this, um, it's, it's weird, it's odd that we then are ignorant that we might be causing offence by then having imported uh, forest oil to then export it to Canada, Australia, New Zealand, where, as it was pointed out to me, the Aboriginal folk have been there for 70,000 years and white, um, white Europeans for about 300. So I think we have something to learn uh, 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 from that. Again, tree friends, we've seen, um, I'll pass on. I'm trying to stick to time. So the social cultural construction is one thing. And the corporate turn is another. The commodification of an educational philosophy, it reflects a, a wider um, you know, societal monetization of uh, educational practices. I work in higher education. We have various debates. Uh, and then the corporate turn in the amplifying of the benefits is, is one of the things I take issue with in my critique. Um, if you've never read Adventure in a Bun by Chris Loins, it's freely available. It is, um, talks about the McDonaldization of outdoor education, where we can be predictable, generalizable, and replicable. So if I want to buy a Big Mac, um, I can go into uh, McDonald's and uh, get a Big Mac, whether I'm in Dublin, uh, Limerick, uh, Montreal, London, and it's the same. But this this is reducing education to one way, one size fits all, and if it's the only way, um, that's problematic, I'd suggest. Uh, again, the commodification, I touched on it earlier. Um, we're very good at this, and it's part of the UK cultural backdrop. Uh, we've exported the RYA Yachtmaster qualification and copyrighted it to provide it as a training package around the world. Um, there are good parts to that, there's bad parts to that. What I do know is that the training courses cost a lot of money. If you want to become a forest school uh, leader, it's going to cost us uh, about a thousand pound, at least a thousand euro. Um, uh, and for a qualification that is at a level that's less than an undergraduate degree, um, we don't have to have a forest school qualification, I argue, 
to be able to go and engage in a philosophical approach based upon Forest School. And uh, certainly Archimedes uh, uh, have been very good at this. They have been the, the brand leaders. Uh, and at one stage they tried to copyright the, the term Forest Schools, um, for which they were unsuccessful. Um, and they're making a nice business out of it. Um, I struggle with um, the fact that now you can do 100% online and become a level three forest school practitioner. Although on the other hand, of course, that may well be that um, uh, in a country the size of Australia or the country the size of Europe, that might be a good thing. Um, and my, uh, my first, uh, my first uh, critique really started having read some work about self-esteem. Um, confidence and self-esteem are improved as skills develop and no one fails. This has a snowball effect, thus improving their sense of self-esteem even more. I've gone back to the original um, uh, um, Forestry Commission uh, research about forest schools that was taking place on their land and there is no evidence that anyone has ever measured the self-esteem of children on forest schools. And it's one of those things that adults, teachers, very well intentioned, um, may well say, I want to raise their self-esteem. I want to make them feel good about themselves. But I cannot tell you how you're feeling. And I cannot begin to fill in and guess how you're feeling. That's it. The research is out there. It does not work. Yet we see it repeated again and again. So Archimedes Earth advertising, um, what does outdoor learning do? Children gaining confidence and self-esteem. It has become reified into the, in, in, into, into the language. Okay, I know I've got about four minutes. Um, I also don't think the theory is well articulated in the, in the training, uh, nor do I think it's well articulated in the books and articles that have been out to date. Um, and particularly uh, play-based learning. To quote John Cree, teachers and practitioners openly admit they find it hard not to interfere and shut up. So the lost in translation idea is about um, British leaders, educators, teachers, um, finding it hard not to tell children how to play. Um, and again, I, I think it links back to our Victorian heritage. I've got time for Elizabeth Wood. She talks about play and um, um, uh, she's a pr professor of play. Um, many of the claims that are made for play are supported by research evidence. However, there continue to be problems in demonstrating to parents and other professionals that children are learning when they are playing. Um, and I think that's absolutely fabulous. Um, and being playful myself, it's something I wish to engage in and, uh, and, and uh, see us do throughout the educational uh, lifespan. I don't just think playing is for little children. I think play and creativity and innovation or, um, or flow, it, they're, all forms of, they're all forms of play. Um, so Elizabeth Wood, that I've adopted this, this as a model that um, if we want to play, if we want to take children to the forest, actually to let them run free um, uh, and uh, semi-structure what they do, takes planning, takes skillful facilitation, takes high level facilitation um, in the outdoors. And I think as outdoor educators, I think there's many lost opportunities. If we're in a forest and we don't have knowledge of the trees, the geology, the ecosystems, the place, the history, the stories, and as such, I think what, um, my critique is the lost in translation is we see, see just a very thin slice. And so, as if by magic, I reckon there's some good points, and I reckon there's some bad points, um, and I know there are some questions, so there's a bunch of references, and then there are some questions. I'll brief. Thanks a million, Mark. Um, uh, I know people have really enjoyed that here, and um, 
uh, I know there's probably lots of comments. Certainly our, uh, our texting comments have been flying up and I know you've addressed some of them during the, uh, the course of that. Uh, I might hand over to Joe, who's going to maybe give some reflections based uh, on the BA in Outdoor Learning and, and the students here and their experience. Okay, thank you, Joe. Sure. Hello, Mark. Hi. Okay, uh, one question. Axe throwing and scouting, I didn't really come across that before. Um, okay, I suppose from our experience from the lads here, what we've what we've come across um, is it's quite hard sometimes to maybe okay I'll start again. Kids <laughs> kids now are so used to learning and sitting down in a classroom and they focus on learning just there and then. When you bring the children outside, um, they feel play, um, and their their may learning mode maybe turns off a little bit. I certainly found that in programs that I'm doing at work here. Um, do you see the same, maybe? Um, do you know what? I, I, I don't know. Uh, I, and, I, and I say I don't know, which is, uh, I'm try not trying to escape, escape the, the, the question. Um, I think there's a belief, a culturally held belief, that um, stu uh, young children and kids are stuck on screens all day indoors. Um, Possibly, uh, possibly. Uh, do they know how to play? Are they given the opportunities to play? Um, the evidence suggests not as they were in my childhood or in my grandparents' childhood, uh, which is why forest school is such a good thing. Um, I think if you leave, if you allow kids to play, if you allow kids to uh, to let them know it's okay to get dirty, muddy, wet. Um, then that's okay. Uh, I, I think one of the issues we have is educating a, a generation of uh, parents, and I talk as a parent, um, uh, generations of primary school teachers, um, because I think I think that, that there's been a shift, and um, some teachers are scared to uh, to go outside. And I'll give you an example. I had a student on a placement in a school. I went to see them, and I said, "Oh, great! What is it you're doing with the kids today?" primary school and, and she said oh I'm, 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 I was going to be running an orienteering session but uh, we can't go outside I said all right why is that then um, it's not raining no but it was raining and the teachers were, were fearful that the children might slip over and hurt themselves and that if they if they didn't slip over and hurt themselves they'd slip over make themselves muddy and the parents would complain so I, so, so I think there's an issue around um, managing expectation but what I do see, and there was a there was a feed on my um, Facebook this morning, um, as bad as it is, because it's a, a great multinational, but Persil are doing the campaign to get kids out and learning and outside playing and muddy. So I think if we can harness onto all of these things, there is this cultural um, Western, oh my God, well, the country's going to the dogs again, everyone's getting obese, children need to play more. I think if we can harness that, um, then that could be a uh, then that could be a good thing. Um, yeah, don't know if that answers your question, Joe. Okay. Um, um, that's quite interesting. That's quite interesting. Now, the questions I have on there, it's it's not hitting actually kind of what I like kind of actually open to openly discuss here. Um, the, there's a, an article by Marie Claire Murphy um, with the Forest Schools Association Ireland here. Um, exploring the construction strand in the Irish primary school visual arts curriculum through the forest school approach. Um, so what Marie did, she used the forest school approach um, to to get through the, the, the curriculum. Um, and the article is actually very good. But she, there's one of the quotes, um, she, she says there's a question to whether it is actually possible to design a curriculum to ensure appropriate lessons are delivered. Yet teachers, teachers' opinions are often overlooked during the creation of curricula. Action research is vital as it empowers teachers to make their voice heard. So that mm -hmm. kind of goes down the road of hitting at the curricula first and then enhancing a little bit. Is that the same in uh, England? Uh, yeah, well, it, my, my view on that is um, it'd be great to do, clearly your question's there, more research is needed. And I'd encourage any practitioner to be engaged in action research, you know, systematic inquiry into their own practice. I'll go back to the very beginning. 
I think we need to think about the big picture. And in England, um, I left school teaching because I had absolutely no say about the curriculum. I couldn't just say what I thought should be in it, what I thought shouldn't be in it. I had no voice. So the National Curriculum for England is there. It's set in London, uh, designed by committees, and it's there. And what we need to do as outdoor educators, if we believe that um, some more time spent outdoors for children and young people and young adults and all people is it is identified to teachers with teachers how the experiences in the forest in uh, outdoors are rich deep authentic and how those can then be related to the curricular aims so Everyone in uh, state education is working in this neoliberal backdrop. You have to evidence what the learning is. You have to prove that you're improving performance. Um, <laughs> outdoors with, um, uh, with literacy as your focus, you, uh, you, you create a plan so that your experience with trees is in your review sessions or uh, around it, you develop a, an informed vocabulary so that when you come back into the classroom and you have to write something, you have this rich, real, authentic, uh, embodied experience to, 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 to hook it on. How rich is that? But we have to help folk make that link. And in my, in my article, I talked about um, outdoor Im immigrants and outdoor natives. You know, I'm an outdoor native now, but I, I think we have to encourage and support and nurture and go, look, it isn't big and scary. It's just a, just a bit of rain and just a bit of mud. And you don't have to climb mountains. You don't have to paddle whitewater rivers. Come to the woods. Engage in it. Smell the smoke. Um, develop the rapport with your kids. And, and that's what we have to harness. So in that essence, Forest School, brand, badge, um, kids in the early years and primary, fantastic. Do you, just going off the first question there, is there, is there a different way to do it other than behind a strong brand of getting kids um, out there? I actually think brand's good. I, I've come to the conclusion that brands are good. And what, what's, um, I'd encourage uh, anyone who's got access to the, to the Joey article to have a, le a read of at least um, Zabby McCreekin's work from Northern Ontario, uh, where she, she kindly puts, I think she writes it as, when I first heard Mark talk, I was deeply disturbed. And I often have that effect on people. Um, but she, she said she went back and she's part of Forest School Canada, and now in a Forest School Canada training in Ontario, they will always bring in an, an indigenous elder to talk about the place that they are and the, um, uh, and the practices that the indigenous folk would have had. Um, okay, there's, there's a few questions coming up there on the side, uh, Mark, if you can see, from yeah. Joan and, and there's Andrew there as well up, if you scroll up a little bit. Uh, yeah, I've got Joan, Joan Whelan. Yeah. Would I, oh, hold on, would I agree that the six principles of Forest School as articulated by Forest School Association are a unique combination with the, within the OE field? Um, no, I wouldn't directly. Um, I think much of what Forest School does, we've seen and we still see, we can call it outdoor learning, we can call it many things. I think the thing that I'd tease out of that, that I particularly like, enjoy, love, is that um, it should be play-based, child-initiated experiences of the outdoors. That's really hard to do if you've got a curriculum to, met, to meet. That's really hard to do if you're trying to show progress. Um, but I think if, if forest school um, associations can hold on to that, and provide appropriate training for those of us who are classic traditional outdoor educators, where we might take a more uh, autocratic stance at times, then I think that that's something that the forest school associations can give to the, wire, to the wider community. Um, anything else? Um, yeah, <laughs> may as well keep going. Um, so I, I made a, I, uh, I, can, I made a point there earlier about the, the east and west coast of, of Ireland being actually quite quite different in the way they're approaching the, the forest schools. 
Um, so I was saying it's very creative song, dance and stuff on the West Coast and quite hands on um, shelter building, etc. in the East Coast. Um, right. Is that again, is that something that's seen over in, in England? Uh, different cultures. I, I think that's a great question and a really interesting observation and my answer is I do not know. I um, was having conversations with a number of folk, um, somebody in Australia uh, and so, uh, folk here about what I think would be interesting is to see how we inhabit this what we call forest school practice uh, by country, um, by region uh, and, and I think one of the one of the things that I think is exciting to hear about the Irish um, position is that you're responding to the culture of the, the, the places that, that you have and, 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 and what's rich there. Um, and, and, and I think that if we can move a forest school practice on, which is this contribution to the robust discussion and debate, it is about acknowledging stories of place and cultural practices within um, where, 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 where we're working, it, even down to um, where, where I am in the West Country of England, the Cornish are very different to the Devon-ish, you know, so um, it's a great question and it's something that would be worth exploring if somebody wanted to do a, a research project with Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> or, or you go off and do your masters or you go you find some funding or you do a phd there is so there are so many questions to ask um could the i suppose getting into the place-based learning um approach i suppose I've kind of seen from some teachers that have taken on the forest school training um they they because they don't experience in their own actual training be, to become an educator um, so maybe evolving the curriculum but a little bit but have you is do you think there's been an involvement in the in the forest schools in the UK and Ireland since it's come in the 1990s yes yes I do um, that what there's been the there's been the formation of the um, forest school association to try and have some um, level of consistency in training provision um, The anecdotal stories, I the quality of people coming through now is not the same quality as the people who came through 10 years ago. Um, that's anecdotal. I don't know. Uh, I don't have the data. I don't have the evidence. Um, I, I, I believe it has evolved because um, when I was first introduced to it, the Forest School Association didn't exist. Um, there were various ways, uh, various different forms of practice in Scotland, in Wales, and then in England. Um, so I don't know. I'd like to think it has. Okay, great. Um, thank you very much, Doctor. Cheers. Thank you. Thanks very much again, Mark, and uh, and thanks to Joe uh, for for coordinating that. Uh, I was privileged enough to be accompanied by Joe traveling in Finland uh, this winter and uh, we were in these large forests in uh, uh, northern um, Karelia uh, and the, on the border of Savonia and uh, uh, Joe was telling the local people that she worked in, uh, in a forest too and they said how big and she said 80 uh, uh, acres and they laughed uh, <laughs> but <laughs> it is a big wood here. Um, Mark, thank you so much for uh, your continued support of us here in IT3. We're um, going to have uh, lots of uh, further debates and journeys. And thanks so much to all our uh, our online visitors who contributed to that. It definitely added hugely to our uh, to our discussions and debates.